Welcome to Open Air Amplified on the Rhythm and News service of Jefferson Public Radio. We stream at IJPR.org. I'm Dave Jackson, and tonight it's a special edition of Open Air Amplified. It's open mic night. We've invited some folks from around the Southern Oregon area to perform in a JPR live session. Coming up a little later, it is singer, songwriter, actress, model Sophia Phoenix, also the acoustic duo Miller Twins, and later on, some Something from Mountaintop Sound. Starting things off, this is a duo called The Balladeer. It's open air amplified. Joining me is a duo who won the Ashland Folk Collective Open Mic Competition in April. They go by the name The Balladeer. That's B-A-L-L-A-D-I-R if you're keeping score at home. They are Travis Puntarelli on guitar and vocals and Rob Taylor on stand-up bass and vocals. And Welcome to JPR, guys. Well, thanks. Yes. Thanks for having us. It's good to have you here, and uh, congratulations on winning Ashland Folk Collective's uh, Battle of the Bands. That was fun. It was a fun performance. It was really fun. We got uh, we got in there and went into the green room, and there was a couple of the other bands were already in there kind of setting up, and we all just played for a couple hours in the green room and then went out and did our individual shows and had a blast. Oh, really? Yeah. It would have been nice to have some uh, uh, something rolling in that green room. That would have been yeah. good. That was a fun, sh- fun night. Yeah. Well, um, let's start off with how long have you guys uh, been in the region? Well, uh, I just moved here, basically. Four That's a Rob talking right now, by the way. That's right, yeah, four months ago. Well, I was living on the rivers uh, in the Klamath Mountains for the past mm-hmm. couple of years, but just moved to southern Oregon, Ashland area. Happy to be here. Cool. How about you, Travis? Uh, I've been out here for about four years with my family. We came out here kind of beginning of COVID. We were living in the suburbs of Indiana and decided we would rather live with our friends here in the forest, and so we did. Cool. So you'd been you'd visited here before? And yeah, I've been coming here about 20 years, uh-huh. just traveling through when I was a when I was a young scrappy uh, dirty curb kid I was <laughs> coming through here quite often and then yeah. we just uh, made friends over the years and cool. and home. other than playing music uh, what do you guys do uh, for work pleasure what well Rob does bunnies <laughs> does bunnies yeah, uh, please explain yeah let's let's define <laughs> that a little bit more uh, no, I'm I'm managing a small community garden and raising rabbits oh cool that's neat. So yeah, you call them rabbits. Sorry. Yeah. Well, it depends on the context. Okay. If there's a good alliteration, bunnies. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm I'm raising also not bu- I'm raising children, so it's uh-huh. kind of the same. We call the bu- you know the kids. It's like go see the bunnies. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's what it is. Yeah, yeah, I'm raising kids, and that's what mostly what we do on, uh-huh. on the off season. Uh-huh. And then you you're a teacher as yeah, well. Yeah, I teach in uh, in Phoenix and Talents. I uh-huh. teach uh, music uh, with Rogue World Music actually, who's uh, oh who had the uh, who had the big. Um, festival here last right. weekend. Right. Oh, neat. Well, let's hear some tunes. What do you guys want to play for us? Mm-hmm. What do we got? Well, let's do uh, Let's do this song. I wrote it in the Cowichan uh, up in Canada <clears throat> about uh, wishing that you could be better, but just being as good as you are. Excellent. In the summer when the day seem long and the moon shines warm I will sing you a song about how I'll be when I'm old I will wake when the sun is arising like the sun song. 
falls and dead falls, I will build you a fire in your place. When the last of the daylight is gone, I will sing you a song I made when I was young about how. theater song about a is it theater is it theater if we don't call it theater this is a little theater song about an old man who comes home after being away for too long <laughs>
Um, well, how about this one? This is a nice new song. Um, this is about like kind of relationship theory. This is about this song's about relationship theory. <laughs> is that your major in? Uh, <laughs> university? Well, that's, my, that's what I majored in in university. All my university years uh, were in relationship theory. <laughs> at me I wonder carefully I figure maybe it's not too late the world was waked up by the smell of a coffee cup and you should never go and throw it all away if you don't try it first I'll never know what makes a garden grow I will be That is the balladeer 
They are a duo consisting of Travis Puntarelli and Rob Taylor, and you're listening to a special open mic edition, live sessions here on Open Air Amplified, where we're getting to know musicians from our region. So that was nice music, you guys. Really appreciate you coming in and playing for us. Uh, what What is it that got you into performing? What do you like so much about it, playing music? Oh, wow. Um, I think... For, for me personally, it's it's a way to be just a total jerk, and everybody loves you for it instead of hating you for it. I, I, I think I usually keep my opinions to myself, except when I'm performing, and then I kind of dress them up and make them feel nice enough and palatable for other people to sort of like take them in and think like, oh, okay, maybe that's not such a bad sentiment. But it kind of allows multiple parts of my personality to show up in the world in ways that they otherwise would not be welcomed. Well, that, that's an interesting answer. That's a <laughs> What about you, Rob? I just like enabling people to do that. <laughs> <laughs> that's, my, that's my thing. And you do. Cool. Um, so what are some of the struggles you've found in uh, live performances and uh, getting your foot in the door places? Um, I mean, well, COVID sure set everybody in a funny way where we're all kind of inside a lot, playing computer and uh, and booking on computer and, and playing music for Instagram and all the other like social apps rather than kind of being outside and mm -hmm. being with each other being with other humans that's been I mean that's always that's kind of like I started school like 15 years ago and have slowly gone through college and mm -hmm. when I started school I remember campus would be really loud with people like yelling at each other and going back and forth mm -hmm. and I just watched through the years people like look down and down and down more and more and more until now it's real quiet like walking around campus it's like wow people used to like get rowdy here and now it's just just like eerily quiet and mm. I think that's kind of the state of the music thing too it's like there's not so many people I mean there's still people out there's still real good people out doing real good things sure. um, in this town in particular there's really good things um, mm -hmm. but but I do I do feel like that's one of the bigger challenges is uh -huh. just getting people out of the house yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um, if you could wave a magic wand and mm -hmm. get whatever you wanted out of music be where you wanted what, what would that be like oh, so. Oh wow, that's that's an interesting question. Well, hey, it's so so hard for so many musicians to have a balanced lifestyle, you know, when they're not being forced to go on the road for half of the year to make ends meet. Um, it'd be nice to be able to make, you know, make passive income like in the '90s, where you could actually <laughs> make money from a record. <laughs> that would be one step. So then you don't need to uh, basically subscribe to a life of sitting in vans and airbuses. That's true. I mean, if we had a magic wand, Rob, like. We could just do like a big Viking hall with like full of our friends with like torches that never went out and mead that was ever flowing and just like music all day and all night. I like I like your answer to this question <laughs> more. <laughs> I mean, pa yeah, yeah, passive income too. <laughs> no, no, no. Come, oh, yeah. come from the hall. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> Well, uh, Rob and Travis, thanks so much for uh, playing for us today and uh, coming in, taking some time to share your music with us. They are Balladeer. Now, where can people find you online, uh, socials? Uh, yeah, online, all the places. Um, I mean, on Spotify, on Bandcamp, really, is how that's the passive income, um, mm -hmm. if anybody feels inclined. I have more albums on Bandcamp, um, sort of hidden things back there. Mm -hmm. But everything's available on Spotify, too, and um, on the Internet and in town. We're actually playing three fundraisers next month. Oh. Yeah, tell um, us about those. Where yeah, you we're going to be playing, um, I think one of them's closed for the AIFF, for the Little Folk um, Collective here in town. And then we're playing an open one. It's like a Beatles tribute fundraiser mm -hmm. on the 21st. Mm -hmm. also that, for the that's with the Asha Folk Collective, That's with right? the Folk Collective, yeah. exactly. And then um, at the end of the month, on the 26th, um, there's a woman, there's a Weave, a new app that somebody's releasing. Um, our friend Pauline is releasing. And uh, so we're playing for that. And that's going to be at the Cedarwood Barn. Me. Um, and I think those last two for sure are open, and I don't know about the first one. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, if you're looking online for the Balladeer, it's B-A-L-L-A-D-I-R. Thanks again for uh, joining us today. Yeah, our deep pleasure. Thanks. Happy to be here. Thank you. Thanks to the Balladeer for coming in and performing for us here on Open Mic Night on Open Air Amplified. Later on, it's Mountain Top Sound recorded at their home studio. Got the Miller Twins on the way and Charlie Prayers. Up next, Danielle Kelly talks with Sophia Phoenix and her band, and they play some tunes for you on Open Air Amplified. My guest in this edition is singer-songwriter Sophia Phoenix. Hey, Sophia, welcome. Oh my God, I'm nervous. Oh, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> um, I know the characters you brought into the studio with you well, but would you go ahead and introduce 
for our listeners. Who you brought in with you today? This is Adam Gabriel on guitar, a local legend, and also Matthew Kremelman on his little cajon setup. This looks like a pretty advanced setup, actually, as far as cajones go. Got a lot going on here. He's very creative. Yeah, remote pedal, a couple toys. Remote pedal, a cymbal. Very cool. So I know that these two join you from time to time on stage, and you've kind of recently begun performing regionally in Southern Oregon. Mm -hmm. Do you have a a band name together for the the three of you for this configuration? No, no, it's just it's just my solo stuff. But I met them at a where did we meet? We met at Wayne was Wayne's jam. Yeah, musician barbecue party. Yeah, we all sort of linked up because you had some lyrics that you were hoping to put music to, and we were just having beers and sat down and started putting music to some of your yeah and and it just fits so well and adam and matthew like stood out and i was like oh i need to work with these two so yeah excellent where we be playing around the region this spring and summer um gosh anywhere i can um i've spent a lot of time in the studio you know in front of the camera but i have not spent a lot of time playing live so that's sort of my next you know challenge i have to tackle uh right now i'm recording an album with Ian Rickard and Sylvia Massey and her studio which is like the nicest studio I've ever been to which is somehow in my hometown Mm -hmm. so yeah I'm really excited to get that done and then while I'm getting that done test out these songs in front of a live audience locally where there's not too much pressure (laughs) that's cool what kind of music is what kind of music is this how would you describe the the new album I guess I would say like western pop Mm -hmm. yeah very cool I I think I know that you're originally from Ashton, right? You're yeah. originally from here. Well, kind of. Yeah, you moved, you moved away and then spent some time away and then you're kind of recently back. Can you tell us that story and fill us in? Yeah, I think I've spent about 50% of my life in LA and 50% here. So I lived in LA till I was 10, lived here till I was 18, went to Berkeley College of Music for a year and dropped out, went back to LA until I was 28 and then sort of crashed back here during the pandemic. Yeah, is that the pandemic kind of what gravitated you back to Ashland? Yeah, definitely, because I think I would have never come back home uh, otherwise because I had it in my head that, you know, you have to go to L.A. to make it. Like, that's what we're all force-fed. And I've had so much more luck in Oregon with modeling, with acting, and with music. So it's been very humbling. Cool. I was going to ask you what else you might do besides music. Can you tell us a little bit about these other facets of your career yeah well well during the pandemic um I was like okay my music career is over like I tried like I was chewed up I'm spit out and out of boredom I just started submitting to modeling agencies and then got signed to uh, one in Portland the option agency and then I got signed to the acting department within that agency and kind of kept going and now now I'm signed to six agencies so I have my hands full with like auditions and I'm so lucky because of the pandemic because I can audition from home it's all self-tape oh wow so my life's kind of weird I just audition from home if I get a gig I hit the road go do it come back make these guys play with me it's kind of a <laughs> interesting life but yeah I've always wanted music to take over um maybe it will are you finding ways that those sort of modes the acting and modeling did they kind of overlap or uh, somehow in eclipse the the music yeah I think um I'm naturally kind of nervous, like nobody would think that if they kind of met me, but I think modeling and acting forces you to perform in a way that's not romantic. Like if you're doing a commercial, you got to say like, you know, I love toothpaste like 10 times, 40 times, you know, and it just, it kind of disconnects you from yourself in a weird way that's, I think, good if you're nervous, you know, because you kind of you realize that there's you that the people are seeing and then there's you inside and you can kind of control both. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah, (laughs) totally. Absolutely. And, um, well, I, we'd love to hear some music on these open mic editions We're we're going to give a listen to three tunes. What would you like to start with? Mm, Okay. Danielle. Um, (laughs) we're going to start with a song called stay wild cowboy. Uh, yeah. All right. Excellent. (laughs)
you mine In order to fly you gotta fall But did you have to leave me so far behind? Oh, stay wild, cowboy You got so much life to live And so much left to give Who am I to write your story? But I got you hanging on every word. Well, is this love or purgatory? Well, damned is a man that loves the end more than the journey. You got so much life to live And so much left to give Say, wild cowboy There's no time to settle down Saddle up and leave this town Or just leave this town That's Sophia Phoenix here at <laughs> Jefferson Public Radio. That's Stay Wild Cowboy. That's a track from the new album coming That's up. That's also the title of the album. That's awesome. I was going to ask you that. Very cool. Yeah. Um, well, you, let, let's hear another one. Okay. This, this is great. You guys sound great. It's uh, Adam Gabriel on the guitar and backing vocals. Matthew Kremelman on the really cool drum cajon kit back there. And Sophia Phoenix on guitar and vocals here. Uh, right. Yeah. What do you What do you want to play next? <laughs> Uh, this next song is called Jesus Loved a Whore. You heard me right. I had to find you Just to lose you Everything I am, good or bad, I swear you're keeping score. I was a wild one, oh, I admit that. Oh, get off my back, baby, even Jesus loved a whore. I'm in a dance, in a trance, in a romance with the universe. And I know the worst thing you can get is exactly what you want When I speak, when I think, when I breathe, she sings back to me And when she does, it feels like the first time I ever heard a song Come on, baby, we both know 
why Jesus loved a whore. I'm in a dance, in a trance, in a romance with the universe. And I know the worst thing you can get is exactly what you want. When I speak, when I think, when I breathe, she sings back to me. And when she does, For the last one, we've got a track called Wild Honey.
That is Sophia Phoenix, Wild Honey, here at Jefferson <laughs> Public Radio. And the studio goes wild. Woo! <laughs> Such a great tune. So cool. Uh, okay, so, hey, thanks so much for coming in today. Um, beautiful songs. Uh, I want to ask you just a couple token open mic, uh, open air amplified I'm questions. Ready. First of all, uh, what is your favorite thing about performing live? Is all there- right, we're going to pass that off to Adam. <laughs> <laughs> Adam's a hardcore live performer, so I actually am curious what your favorite thing is about performing live. Oh, there's this magic moment that happens sometimes. Like you can practice and practice, but sometimes you're, if you're playing solo or even with a group of people, where you're just everybody's locked in, and then you like it's like you're not even trying, but the music is coming out of all of you, mm. and you can see the audience feeling it too. Yeah, and there's this. It really, uh, to me, it really is like a magical thing. This magical connection thing that starts happening, and you can feel like they're they're digging it, and everybody's there, and uh, that's just it's like flow state in wow, live performance. Yeah, yeah. That's just yeah, it's amazing. It's my yeah, mine would be planning the outfits. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> since I haven't played that much alive, uh, it's going on in my head. So I'm like, oh, I'm gonna wear that, and I'm gonna wear this color lipstick, and <laughs> I can relate. So maybe ask me this by the end of the summer. Maybe the I'll outfits have a were answer. close second for me. That's what I was gonna say. But really? Then also, also, <laughs> the, all the <laughs> awesome. Um, and then, what might be like the biggest struggle in performing live? What 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 are parts of live performance that's kind of difficult? Um, I think the biggest struggle performing live is the same as recording, the same as being an artist in general, where it just takes a toll on your mental health to put yourself out there every day for years. I'm like getting emotional now talking about it, you know, Woo. um, like the rejection is real. And I don't think when people go to see a live performer, you watch a movie, you know, you see a side character, like you don't realize that person has gone through the ringer just to get to that bar, you know, in the corner or just to get to, I mean, you know, this, these, this profession, this path, this journey affects every corner of your life, your relationships, your job, your kids, everything. And we have to sacrifice so much to do sort of the bare minimum. And I just don't think people that are like have a normal job or, you know, they just don't quite understand the level uh, that it takes to to pursue this in a serious way to try to be competitive in a in a real way. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and thirdly, if you could wave a magic wand, what is your current biggest most fantastical musical aspiration? Um I want to get this new project signed. That's my big goal right now. Um whether it's a distribution company, whether it's a label, I really want um someone yeah I'm looking for a partner because I experienced it in modeling where I used to uh, try to get gigs myself and I would try to you know I was on Craigslist I would show up to stores and be like hi can I model for you you know and once I got signed to an agency it was like oh Adidas like just Adidas wants you you know and like those certain doors are just shut to unsigned artists Mm -hmm. and so I want to get you know I want to do festivals I want to have a proper distribution. I've released vinyl in the past. I hand mailed vinyl records, you know, like you know, 2000 of them. So I just want a little more infrastructure because I'm not exactly the most structured yeah. person. So. Yeah. Well, good luck. This all seems yeah. within reach. Where can <laughs> listeners find your music? Where, what are your, can you give us your socials, your website, give us where we can find you? Yeah. I kind of have a weird past cause I changed my name, my, my old last name was Sophia Fister and then I was in a band called Two Neighbors and then um, when the Phoenix fires were going down you know I saw that city of Phoenix sign and I kind of connected to you know the that idea of rebirth and all that so I legally changed my name to Phoenix and now I have no music under my new name so (laughs) So you got um, a fresh slate for this new album I am a fresh slate I'm a newborn baby (laughs) So yeah, beautiful. So it'll be Sophia, <laughs> Sophia Phoenix. Phoenix. I mean, I have all the social media. I got Instagram, Facebook, under under just that Sophia, Sophia Phoenix. Sophia, if you, yeah. All yes. right, we'll check her out. Sophia Phoenix on Instagram, on Facebook, on all the socials. Well. She's performing <laughs> live around the Rogue Valley yes. in our region with with greats like Matthew Kremelman and yes. Adam Gabriel. 
You're listening to Open Mic Edition of Open Air Amplified on Jefferson Public Radio. Up next on Open Air Amplified, it's a JPR Live session with the Miller Twins. Joining me today is the Miller Twins. That's Ben and Nat Miller. Hi, guys. How's it going? Welcome to JPR. Hello. Thanks for having us, Dave. You thanks bet. for having us. So tell us about how you guys uh, started getting into music. Well, we are the X generation. We grew up in Ohio, and we were latchkey kids. And we lived in a poor neighborhood, but we were the, the more wealthy people in the neighborhood because we had cable TV and a microwave. And we were there when MTV started. So we would come home from school as little kids, and we would be home alone by ourselves for 45 minutes or an hour, and we would watch MTV. So they got, got an interest into music. So uh, so going back, uh, I'm not sure exactly how old you guys are, but um, going back then, though, uh, MTV wasn't playing folk and bluegrass. What, what got, what, it was uh, not. <laughs> by the time we were in high school, which would have been the early 90s, uh-huh. the Grateful Dead had hit our high school like a bomb uh-huh. and exploded into tie-dye <laughs> with everyone. And we kind of gravitated towards acoustic sets of the Grateful Dead, uh-huh. which turned us on to bluegrass. We knew who Bob Dylan was, and we listened to some folk stuff. But I don't think it was until the listening to acoustic sets of the Grateful Dead, the more bluegrassy stuff, we got turned yeah, on then, to this style. And discovering, music. you know, more of a root style music, music through like the side projects of Jerry Garcia and uh-huh. David Grisman, things like that. Uh-huh. Nice. And just uh, if you're uh, watching at home, which you probably aren't, uh, uh, to my right is uh, Nat Miller. He plays guitar and sings. And to my left is Ben Miller. He's got mandolin singing as well and a banjo he's going to play a little later on for us. That's correct. That's a four-string tenor banjo. All right. Well, why don't you guys play some tunes? What do you want to play? What do you want to start with? We're going to play you some new songs today that aren't out there on the Internet yet. And they're not on streaming services yet. We're going to play you uh, one of our new songs called Head North. Excellent. This is the Miller Twins on Open Air Amplified. Turned around and walked away 
away before I could say, I'm sorry for who I am. Now the snow is coming soon, don't know what I'm gonna do in the cold dark winter without you. We're going to play another original tune for you all. This is called Watching Over You. This is Ben, and I wrote this about 25 years ago when I started dating my wife. I knew it was true love, and that's, this is what this song is about. It's about true love. It's Watching Over You. Thank you. 
watching over you. This next song was written by me, Nat, and um, Ben and I are pushing 50 years old now, but we're still brothers. We still fight a little. In the last little day or two that we weren't speaking, I wrote this song, and uh, it may sound like a breakup song, but it's really about Ben and I, and uh, sometimes I feel like we're sinking our own ship. He has a, a drill with a hole saw, and he's drilling holes in the ball and boat, and I'm bailing out, and then at some point he goes, hey, let's switch. You drill. And I'll bail. And we're like, okay. And that may be just be the dynamic of twins, but we're getting better. But this is called the captain, because sometimes it feels like we may sink our own ship. I love you, Ben. I love you too, man. This is called the captain, and it's brand new. Driving can be 
left and I'm going down. That is Nat and Ben Miller, otherwise known as the Miller Twins. So I um, wanted to talk a little bit about uh, that banjo you're playing. T- tell me a little more about that banjo. Well, the banjo's new to our, our stage act, and it's new to our songwriting. Mm-hmm. Um, I started playing mandolin in 2016 when Nat and my mom passed away. She, before she died, she said to Nat and I, she said, you know, you could play that one Grateful Dead song at, our funeral, at my funeral when I pass. And we looked at each other, and we looked at her, and we said, do you mean Ripple? And she said, yes, it just, it's just a good feel-good tune. And it kind of reminds me of parts of the Bible. And so when my mom passed away, I looked at my wife and said, it's time. And we, we went down to the little local music store in Ohio where my parents lived. And uh, we said, it's time. What can you sell us? And he sold us a mandolin. And I started playing mandolin. And then a couple years ago, our bass player, Adam Geith, who lives in Yellow Springs, Ohio, and we just got back from tour with him um, through uh, the Heartland for a, a four shows, a string of four shows. And a couple years ago, he took this in, I think, on trade, this four-string tenor banjo, and he sent it out to Oregon to us. And lo and behold, it's a 1925 Gibson tenor banjo. Wow. And then our friend Tom Neckville, uh, an acquaintance, a friend of ours, who lives in Sisters, who does Neckville banjos. I took it to him. He put the new head on. I polished all the metal on it. And it plays great, sounds great, and we think it really adds to our songwriting. Uh-huh. Yeah, I really yeah. like it. Yeah, I, I, I kind of agree with your mom about Ripple. It's a, I've always thought of it as almost a hymn. It's a, yes, so. yeah. And Nat, you were talking about getting a new guitar, kind of a special I, guitar. What, how did that come about? Um, I would have no idea. The stars <laughs> were just aligned. Um, it's been over two years ago, Ben and I played, uh, the Oregon Bluegrass Association contacted Ben and I and asked us to play a showcase at the Wintergrass Music Festival in, um, in, in, outside of Seattle. And we were up there, and um, uh, Thompson Guitars, the Christine, the manager, CEO, president, she's a big wig there, um, approached us and, you know, and just like, I loved your set and blah, blah. And I'd, I'd kind of been liking all their stuff on Instagram and social media. I was like a huge fan. And um, she goes, what do we have to do to get you playing a guitar? And I'm like, well, I'd love to. They're just super expensive. And so we just talked more, and uh, some emails went back and forth, and uh over two years ago, I put in a, a down payment. I've been making payments, and uh, and um, I just got a, a text message or a, a message from um, one of the guys that works there and sent me a picture of my guitar is out. I'm finishing. The neck is not on, but they're hoping to have it. I'm going to head up to Sisters um, in a week, and hopefully that's going to be done. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to have a Preston Thompson, you know, mm-hmm. dreadnought guitar. Congratulations. Turquoise inlays. I can't wait. Yeah, that sounds like a great guitar. So, um, what's your what what's your favorite thing about creating music and uh, and performing and uh, what you guys have been doing for a while now? The greatest thing is um, when people come up afterwards and say to us, "You don't sound like anybody else. I don't yeah. know who you sound like." That is the best thing. Uh-huh. Being in these small, intimate listening room shows where you're you really get to connect with the people. And um, we like to tell the stories behind our songs. We play a uh, two-hour two show now, and it's pretty much all originals except for a couple uh, unique traditionals that not a lot of people play. And um, really connecting with people and having them come up and say to us, you know, after your show, we kind of feel like we know you guys a little bit. Like you're, We kind of feel like you guys are friends of ours now. And that's what makes it makes it fantastic and um nat here for me i love it when i'm when i'm playing a song that i've written they're my words my story and if it's not my story it's a story i'm telling that you know of somebody else and to see, just to see people out there that are bobbing their heads and tapping their feet and you know that a couple times now i've got an email that said that one song of yours i i, I stream it all the time and it really helped me through a um like a bad time in my life. That's happened like twice now. And that just makes my heart just explode, like that my art somehow, because I've only been writing about five years, mm-hmm. um, and, uh, or maybe less, maybe only four years now. And uh, just to have my art really impact someone in a positive way just feels so good. 
it just feels amazing to have that happen. So uh, what's coming up for you during the summer? Are you guys doing any shows, festivals, anything like that? We are. Um, we're kind of taking the this, this summer a little um, light because we just got back from um, a, f- a run of four shows in Nashville, Tennessee, Lexington, Kentucky, and then oh. we made stops in Indiana, Ohio before we flew home. And our summer is really filling up with family stuff, mm-hmm. and we're trying to balance um, gig time and family time together. I think our next shows in the area will be the Siskiyou Folk and Bluegrass Festival here in Southern Oregon. And I, and I think maybe the only other show we have in this area will be John Prine Night at Roxanne Winery. Nice. And that's in July. Huh. And so tell us about the, the Tennessee tour here in the Midwest. Um, it was just like a, a bucket list thing. When we travel, we have camper vans. We have vans like a lot of musicians, big white vans. And um, we travel a lot in those. And it was like, well, let's, let's fly. Let's book a show and let's actually fly and see how that goes and see if we have a good time. And we flew into Nashville and we, we have some friends there that are professional musicians that try to tell us that the people we meet are not famous. And I, I try to say, we know them in Oregon, they're famous. <laughs> and um, so Nashville was great. Um, we had a great show there and went on to Kentucky and had a good show. Um, the, the shows that really stood out for me was the Indiana show and Ohio show because in Indiana is where we went to college. And so we had just a, just a packed house, listening room, so many friends and family. I must have received and given 500 hugs that night. <laughs> and then Ohio was even better. Mm-hmm. And we had all kinds of family there and friends because it was outside. It was only eight miles south of the town that we grew up in. And so it was like this like high school reunion, family reunion, family reunion from the other side of the family. Um, it was in a historic opera house oh, nice. called the Clifton Opera House. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it's a 200-seat capacity. We tried to sell out. They've never actually sold out. Yeah. We got really close. Oh, congratulations. But did not. We yeah. didn't sell out, yes. but we got really close. And the acoustics were amazing. Yeah. Yeah. The acoustics were just amazing. The, the sound guy, I don't know where he was. He must have not made bail. But Ben set up sound for us before we played. Right. And everyone said the sound was just like the best of the tour. So oh, it was excellent. good. Yeah. Well, then, and congratulations on that and, and getting out of the region and playing yeah, elsewhere. it was That's a good time. Cool. That is Nat and Ben Miller, otherwise known as the Miller Twins, put up their set here on Open Air Amplified, special open mic edition featuring musicians from our region here in uh, Northern California and Southern Oregon. Thanks, you guys, for playing. That sounded oh, great. Thank you so much for having us. Thank yeah. you for having us. Thanks again to the Miller Twins. Find more of my conversation with them on our podcast at IJPR.org. Up next is Charlie Prayers on Open Air Amplified. My guest today is local singer-songwriter Charlie Prayers and his band. Welcome, Charlie, to the studio. Yeah, thanks for having us. There was a real cute name I've seen on posters for your band name, and you got a couple couple characters in the studio with you. Can you introduce your band to us? Yeah, totally. We got Gio Vitas on the horn, Gabe Denver Lamont on the bass, and Julian Cole on the drums. The formerly known as Double Dares Band. Exactly. Yeah, we, we scrapped that name. It was kind of a mouthful, and they, they'd just rather like be Charlie Prayers along with me. Very cool. Well, tell us a little bit about yourself. You guys are Rogue Valley, Rogue Valley folks. Is that where you guys all grew up? Um, no, I have been here for almost six years now. I'm originally from Santa Ana, California, and like Costa Mesa area. And I came up here like six years ago and fell in love with it. Absolutely. Came to Jacksonville and just never looked back. What brought you up here? Um, I had a friend who was from, who is from Jacksonville, and I ran a music studio with him down there in Orange County. And then uh, he was like, hey, you want to go check out Jacksonville? You can stay with my parents, see if you like it. Because I expressed that I was tired of the city. And it, it was just the, the cure that I was looking for. Um, just perfect amount of nature and amount of people. And like the music scene was a lot more vibrant for what I was trying to do, honestly. Here in Southern Oregon. Mm-hmm. How cool. Well, tell us a little bit about the studio that you had down, down in Southern California. Um, it was just like a personal studio that me and my buddy ran called The Stew. And it was inside of a lockout music studio. Down there you have a lot of lockout music studio buildings where you like rent a big room or two. And you can just, it's already set up for a music studio with like clean power and Wi-Fi and 
the hallways are decorated with like vinyl pictures of like Prince and Tupac and random artists. And so, yeah, we ran it out of there and we would do mostly like hip hop and pop and a couple bands here and there, but mostly like hip hop and pop stuff. And we'd engineer their stuff and make our own stuff out of there and even live out of there at some points. Um, so that was fun. We did that for like six or seven years as well. What else do you do besides music? Are you a full time musician? Do you have other things that take up yeah. parts of your day or yeah. or or Yeah, definitely. Um, a day job for sure. Uh, I'm the customer service manager over at Guitar Center, which is I think where we met. Yep. Um you were coming in for like a light or something. Uh, I hope that worked out for you. Something, oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um and yeah, I've been doing that for a while and luckily that job like is conducive to what I'm trying to do because we get a good discount. I'm meeting everyone in the music scene like constantly. I also have hosted a certain amount of open mics in the Valley over the years. Um, I'm currently hosting one at Jefferson Spirits every other Sunday in Medford. And it's really helpful for even like that type of stuff because I'm constantly seeing new musicians and old, and like veterans and telling them about like the events going on and just kind of helping the people I do know get what they need. And that's always cool. Do uh, do most of the people working there also dabble in music one way or another? Yeah, yeah, usually, uh, whether they're DJs or musicians or just like involved with throwing the shows, yeah. How cool. Um, so tell us just a little bit more about the kind of places you like to perform locally. Where can people find you? Hosting lo- open mics at Jefferson Spirits, that's in Medford, Oregon. Where else do you like to play? Um, right now, we've got like a continuous thing going with Belfiore. We're there at least once a month. Um, we really like playing at Oberon's. They're a fun a fun crowd always. Um, Local 31 is cool in Ashland as well. Um, we're playing at Relic Winery this weekend and also next month too. Um, where else do we play? The Sound Lounge in Grants Pass is one of the funnest places. Also the 238 bar in Grants Pass is super fun. Um, they have just great crowds out there. And if people listening want to find you online and want to keep uh, abreast of these shows, where can they find you? What's a good way to track you? Yeah, Charlie Prayers. So Instagram, it's Charlie Prayers. And then um, Facebook, it's also facebook.com slash Charlie Prayers, C-H-A-R-L-E-E-P-R-A-Y-E-R-S. Very cool. Some of the first uh, music that I saw you when I came across your profile was primarily rap um and it sounds like you did a lot of rap when you were down in uh producing down in southern california yeah. um tell us a little bit about the evolution because of mu- your music now at the in the southern oregon northern california wine scene is a little more i would say soul um mm-hmm. and you have a band um tell us about that transition for you yeah well growing up down in santa Ana, i was uh definitely much more of a city slicker um grew up around like neighborhoods and and gangs and stuff like that and graffiti culture and I grew up doing all that stuff um and then so I just like would dig for vinyl records and make beats and the best vinyl records to make beats out of were jazz records for me and I quickly had a thousand records in my garage of just like the greatest jazz that you could find and um listening to that eventually kind of um, made me bored of just making beats. I was like, wait, I could do this thing that I'm sampling. Like, And then I started playing guitar and slowly started just playing more guitar to the point where I'm like, I could just do this and write the songs over this type of beat. And then, um, yeah, just I met the right people who were able to teach me more about music. And even these guys, like, I feel like all of these guys know more music theory than me. And I'm just learning every time I, I practice with them and I'm super grateful for for the the crew that I have right now. Well, we're glad to have you here in the studio, and we'd love to have a little earful of that sound. What would you like to start with? Yeah, this first tune is called Here to Love You, and this is off the second Charlie Prayers album called Here to Love You. Girl, what you thought that I would slide away 
back up that tree from which I came But no, I'd rather stay right here with you And keep you company I'm your employee of the month I'm working holidays I know you got a lot of suckers And you got a duck for cover When they come in at you with cliche Girl, I don't mean a hover But I ain't an undercover I'm just loving on the way you was raised Ooh, think about it Don't doubt it Just feel Ooh, please I'm about it Don't doubt it For real I ain't here for seconds I ain't here to love you I learned my lesson Life gave me that one, two The third's the charm, darling Take my hand and come through I'm here for second, sugar I'm here to, I'm here to love you I'm here to love you I'm here to love you I'm here to, I'm here to love you love you you got some walls up your heart's a fortress and I'm sure you don't owe no one nothing cause you're gorgeous I got that melody you need just for this those memories weighing you down are so enormous now my cup is running over when I'm looking at your sober love you sent me on a trip baby come a little closer I'ma love you I'm supposed to know what zip stands or tricks ooh think about it, don't doubt it, just feel, oh please, I'm about it, don't doubt it, for real, I ain't here for seconds, I ain't here to love you, I've learned my lesson, life gave me that one, two, the third's the charm, darling, take my hand and come through, I'm here for seconds, sugar, I'm here to, I'm here to love you. I'm here to love you I'm here to love you I'm here to, I'm here to love you I'm here to love you Come around trying to hound at you But I already know, dear It's better to be sincere Now if you have a flower It's best to let that flower breathe All the leaves fall down And I'm just lost in your breeze huh. I'm here for seconds I ain't here to love you I've learned my lesson Life gave me that one, two The third's a charm, darling Take my hand and come I'm here for second sugar I'm here to, I'm here to love you I'm here to love you I'm here to love you I'm here to, I'm here to love you I'm here to love you Charlie Paris here at Jefferson Public Radio with Here to Love You. How cool. What's up next? Up next, we got Comfort. And this is on the next album, um, Detective Charlie. Craving comfort A little bit more than company We could be something special I promise that I'll be careful Oh, 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 I see you 
She don't claim to be all that But she makes some other girls fall back Running game won't do anything Phone rung all day She don't never give a call back High quality, mentally an oddity Got a one touch with a fire psychology You can tell this female is really real Never with a head over heels like she ought to be Money on the mind, doing well Economically, school part time Got a balanced methodology Knew what she had, did it properly Thinks boys with apologies are comedy She don't got too many friends, girls are gossipy Say what's up, cause hypocrisy as far as I can see This is our number, my one love wonder See you craving comfort A little bit more than company We could be something special I promise that I'll be careful Oh, 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 oh I see you craving comfort bit more than we could be so special baby i promise that i'll be careful oh, 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 oh. charlie shaped hole in the middle of a heart little does she know so i gotta go hard this love ain't fair cause i had a head start how to get it cooking like a culinary art would have never thought i could ever get like this high risk but i know the reason i exist is to spread love with my consciousness i want to make you feel wants and miss when we kick it i feel like the kid is on some ish what sign when baby girl has a wish in the kitchen wrist whipping up your favorite dish confidently follow nature into our bliss oh yes i love this so oh, you make me realize i don't got control two-thirds of my size girl i got to yo wrote the song just to let you know Craving comfort A little bit more than company We could be something special I promise that I'll be careful Oh, 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 oh. I say you're craving comfort Whoa. A little bit more than company We could be something special, baby I promise that I'll be careful Oh, 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 oh Rich I see you looking down and that to me is so bizarre Shining like a star but you don't know how bright you are Diamonds need some pressure, that's why life is getting hard I'm here to groove and bend with you like strings on my guitar Craving comfort A little bit more than, a little bit more than we could be so special, baby I promise that I'll be careful Still craving comfort A little bit more than A little bit more than We could be so special I promise that I'll be careful Oh, 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 oh. I still craving comfort Whoa, A little bit more than A little bit more than We could be so special, baby I promise that I'll be careful Oh, oh, craving comfort Charlie Prayers live on Open Air Amplified with Comfort here in studio. We have time for one more tune. What would you like to wrap up with? Let's wrap up with Angel. So this is the title track of the first album. So the first album is called Angel. And this is, uh, yeah, Angel.
Feels like money in my pocket plus the happiness Ain't no stress is getting to me Slightest touch suits me When her wings caress me Life is finally moving Something by the way is so ethereal Watch it like a cartoon I'm the kid with morning cereal And when I call her name she's there I could do the same I swear We could play this game all day That we know she's gonna win I've got an angel From above I got an angel To show me love I got an angel Sun is shining, birds are singing, heavenly configuration. Something by the way is so ethereal. Watch it like a cartoon. I'm the kid with morning cereal. I've been around the block, my share. At last, someone got my prayers. We could play this game all day that we know she's gonna win. I've got an angel. From above, I got an angel. Show me love, I got an angel From above, I got an angel I've got an angel That's Angel from Charlie Prayers and the band formerly known as the Double Dares. I, for what that's worth, I think that's a really cute name. And you should keep it whenever the poster has enough space. <laughs> that's uh, Gabe Lamont on the bass, Julian Cole on the drums, Gio Beatus on the boat. Am I saying that right? On the bone. And uh, Charlie Melendez, a.k.a. Prayers over here. Um, you guys, thanks for coming in today. You guys got a great sound. Um I have a couple token questions here for our sort of open mic edition of this open air amplified segment. Um, first off, what is one of your favorite things and why are you drawn to perform live, live performance? Uh, so live performance, you know, um, I'm definitely drawn to it because, um, you know, if I can be vulnerable here, I, I have not, I've been taking a... a so I've not been drinking. And I, at first I was worried, you know, what, what's my music going to sound like now that I'm not drinking? And like, is it even going to be fun? And I've been doing it so much more and so much stronger ever since I stopped drinking. Um, and at first I had to like get reacquainted with the stage and get reacquainted with like my connection to music. And then it proved to be even stronger than anything that I thought it was. Um, it's just the most fun thing for me to be on stage and to be listening to other musicians and to 
like have like a call and response with them. And I guess uh, the the jazz part of it, you know, not the jazz as a genre, but the jazz in the sense that like what's spontaneously happening because um, we're listening to each other. That's my favorite part of the music, like playing with cool people that can listen and, and kick back ideas and, and just keep playing that musical hot potato with it. How cool. Hey, congratulations on sobriety. That's really neat. Thank you. And then I guess on the flip side of that, what is something that you struggle with the most in live performance? Um, bad sound at venues. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to call out any any venues, you know, locally. No, but, no. <laughs> <laughs> but like, it's, it's tough sometimes um, when we can't hear each other. That's why we're so grateful to, for, to like be under this audio scope here. Um, with the in ears and the the monitoring system going on, shout out to the sound guys back there. Um, this is another level for us to hear each other on. So so yeah, that's that's definitely the most challenging part when the crowd is so close and so loud, and the mics are feeding back, or we're even just having to run our own sound because the budget's not there for a sound guy. Like there's so many little things like that in a up and coming local act that I think the crowd overlooks. So when they hear a little bit of feedback and they're off put by it, like that's that should be someone's job, not the band's job. <laughs> not only am I writing songs, yeah. performing behind the mic, dressing up, being here, yeah. entertaining you <laughs> to run the electrical as well. Mm -hmm. um, if you could major, wave a magic wand, what what is your current biggest musical aspiration right now? Um, musical aspiration to like probably to like play a tiny desk on NPR or something. Cool. Um, yeah, that would be super cool. We love NPR over here. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks for taking time to come and talk to us today and share some of your music. Thanks, Gabe, Julie, and Gio, and Charlie. Mm -hmm. Thanks for listening. It's Open Air Amplified on the Rhythm and News service of Jefferson Public Radio. It's Open Mic Night, celebrating the music of Southern Oregon with live sessions from bands you might catch around town. I got to catch up with Mountaintop Sound at their home studio, hear them play, have a conversation. This is Open Air Amplified. Joining me now is Mountaintop Sound, and for this session, I'm in their home studio. Mountaintop Sound blends Americana, a little bluegrass, and progressive folk for a multifaceted Americana sound. The band's fronted by Stephen Swift and April McPherson on guitar, mandolin, and vocals, respectively. On bass, we have... Coleman Antonucci. And on banjo... Caradwen Ames. And uh, you're, Coleman, you're from Southern Oregon? You've yeah, been, been born here... in Grants Pass. Uh -huh. Where yeah. do you live now? Grants Pass still. Uh -huh. <laughs> and how about you, Carrie? Uh, born in Ashland. Ashland? Yeah. Yeah, so. I appreciate you all taking the time for pl to play with us today. Stephen and April, you're relatively new to Southern Oregon, right? Yeah, that's Correct. true. And you both have a background in the arts. Tell us about where you came from and that background. So. Yeah, so I was born in Roanoke, Virginia, and grew up in the Florida Keys, spent most of my formative years there. And then uh, the last 25 years, though, I had lived in Southern Utah. Mm -hmm. And uh, the last 10 taught at uh, Southern Utah University. Mm -hmm. But every year we'd come visit the Redwoods uh, in the Northern California area, fell in love with it, and said, why don't we live closer to there? Yeah. So we started looking for jobs in the area, and I found a teaching position at RCC for art and design, and mm -hmm. we decided, let's go. Let's be closer to the place we love. Nice. And April, what about you? Uh, so I hail from a little tiny mountain town by the name of Running Springs, California, yeah. Southern California. Mm -hmm. uh, family's still there uh, we'll be heading there actually in a few weeks so that'll be good to go back there but um, I as far as music goes I don't really have a music background ironically uh. didn't really start playing a lot until Steve and I met 2015 uh. um, ish uh -huh. um, and then what we formed is like the beginning of this was a duo wasn't until I think about 2019 uh -huh. um, so all fairly new to me but otherwise art photography graphic arts and things like that it's always uh -huh. it's always been there yeah. very cool and uh, so studio work is a little bit different. Like you, you guys just recorded an album called Two. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming that's your second album. Yeah, yeah. it is. <laughs> and you, yes. you guys did the recording and everything yourself. Yeah. And that was here? Or? No, that was back in Utah. Oh, it was. And okay. done with our previous band. We had a different bass player, a different kind of banjo player. Uh -huh. We called him rhythm banjoist. We actually hired him for his singing. He was uh -huh. a beautiful singer. He could uh -huh. sing amazing harmony. 
But uh, now we have a real banjo player. And whenever he calls to say hi to us, he always jokes because he sees videos of Carrie. And he's uh-huh. like, you've got a real banjo player. She can do all the banjo things. <laughs> That's kind of fun. So how do, how do you uh, how, what how did you get into the, actually the music production piece of it? That's a- oh God. Well, I living in little Cedar City, Utah, for the last twenty five years. If you're going to produce anything, you got to do it yourself. Uh-huh. So I had to learn to do everything, I, which kind of actually ended up taking me in the direction of going into to school and getting my degree, mm-hmm. and then the arts degree that is, and then uh-huh. getting my arts degree for my master's um, as well. But and eventually teaching, but um, I really got into video production, audio production, did a lot of that for a long time, and did a lot of arts and graphic design, and so, yeah, you just kind of had to do it yourself, so uh-huh. I had to learn the hard way, and I feel like I'm still learning. Uh-huh. It's, you know. I, I, music seems to be that for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if, if you have it mastered, you're not trying anymore. Mm-hmm. Sort of <laughs> well, let's hear some songs. What do you want to play today? Uh, the first song will be written by Miss April McPherson. And it's called Make It. Make It is just a song kind of about loving nature and the outdoors. And that's a big part of why we moved here, like Steve said. Um, I feel like a lot of my lyrics gravitate towards that because I'm a huge nature nerd. So nothing like some good trees and birds and songs. (laughs) Ready? One, two, one, two, three, four. Nestled in the woods lies a cabin by the creek where I go. This one is, um, I don't know, it's kind of about uh, sort of trying to embrace the good in life. I, I was early in my um, songwriting, I guess, life, career, whatever it was, 
um, I really had an issue with, uh, I wrote a lot of kind of, you know, everybody's mean, uh, everybody's mean to me, uh, I hate the world. I was really angsty in my early writing. But uh, now as I get a little bit older and I feel like I've, I've, I've done a lot musically, I, I'm trying to put out a more positive message. And yeah. so this is sort of about that. It came from a friend of mine who all, every, every day we talked, he, he just told me the worst thing that's happening ever in his life. It was every day that was the worst day. And I was just like, come on, man. Got to smile a little more. Like, you know, maybe that'll help you, you know. Uh, I don't know if it did. Maybe it does. Maybe it doesn't. Okay, bear traps, ready? Bear traps, bear traps, put on the ground to slap a nut and soul away. Trade in smiles for high loans and crowns, pretending life is not okay. Remember how lucky that your life has been with all of the strength it can take. Accept all the goodness and love you to see and smile.
So this is a brand new song. This will be on our third album, which we're going to be working on this uh, summer, at the start of the summer, so in about five weeks. I think, in total, so far, we probably have about seven songs hmm. this group knows that are new enough that we're going to put them on there. Like, Unfeathered Moss will go on the new album because mm -hmm. it's only on an EP. Mm -hmm. Make It will go on a new album because it's only on an EP. Mm -hmm. So there's two in the can right there. And then we have about five new ones, and so a few more we've got coming down the pike. Um, but this one is one about um, just that. Uh, so this is about being on the stage. It's called Stage, and it's kind of about trying to let go of all that nerves and crap in your head and, and, and get on with it, you know? All right. Okay, you ready? Brand new song. Let's go, guys. One, two, three.
This is Mountaintop Sound in a special JPR live session of Open Air Amplified. So, um, how, how does the writing process work? How, how, who, when you're bringing in songs, learning oh, new songs? Yeah, and... that's, that's ironic. That's fun. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's 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 pretty straightforward. April and I are the core of the band. Always have been. We started as a duo, mm-hmm. and uh, probably die as a duo. <laughs> <laughs> In a, hopefully not in a plane, um, but uh, I never want to fly. I hate playing. Anyway, sorry. So it's usually uh, April and I will work on songs together, and then we bring them to Coleman and Carrie mm-hmm. or whoever we're playing with at the time. We've had a couple different versions of this band. We're, we think of ourselves as modular. Mm-hmm. Um, we also have a friend who lives on uh, on the coast who plays banjo with us every once in a while, and so he'll come over when Carrie can't play a show, and he'll join us on banjo. It's kind of fun. And uh, and so it's nice because we're we're sort of open to that. And then we don't really tell them anything. We just say, play how you feel on our song. Go for it, and let them bring their flavor to it, which is great because then it becomes a unique version of mm-hmm. whatever it is we write. Um, but yeah, that's sort of been the main way we've always done it. Um, we like to feature other musicians in the band. So like Coleman is his own musician and of, of his own right and does his own thing, plays mm-hmm. in his own family band and plays his own music. And so, um, and classically when it's like your group, Mountaintop Sound, right. you know, we, we, we jam a Coleman song every set is mm-hmm. what we're doing, you know, so right. he can sing one of his and, and showcase his little, his stuff and jam, so have some fun. And, uh, but we've always just kind of kept it just the two of us writing and, uh-huh. and bringing it to the band. Cool. And I, I, I like the aspect of having other people sort of write their own parts. It's a yeah. kind of the organic kind of bluegrass way of doing things. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't, don't want to like be like, no, play the bass this way or play the banjo that way. I yeah. love what they, and actually oftentimes it surprises us. Uh-huh. Like we get, like I, I get to I'd be like, oh, damn. And Coleman wasn't even really like a full-time bass player until he played with us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, surprisingly. I've really only been playing full-time bass for like a year now. Oh, uh-huh. I did a lot of bass for like recordings and stuff, but uh-huh. that's more like learning a pattern. I had to actually like learn how to play the instrument, right? Okay. Which I hope I do learn one day. <laughs> Coleman, no, whatever. He's kicking butt. Yeah, he's been. We've been so impressed with his like growth on that instrument over the course of playing with us in the last year. It's awesome. Man, you guys aren't hearing all my wrong notes anymore. That's awesome. <laughs> that is cool. <laughs> no, no I, wrong notes, right? <laughs> I, I appreciate that. It's been a lot of fun, and it is. Uh, it is nice to you know, you guys. Th- this band does a great job on the song that we do, and uh, it's it's truly uh, it's just a special treat because like I'd been wanting to be a bass player in a band, and it's uh, you know all of a sudden these guys just like show up at one of the open mics, at the Southern Oregon Songwriters open mic, and. Uh, and then, like, the next time I see him, they're like, hey, you want to be our bass player? And it was like, what? Okay. <laughs> Thank you, universe. I guess that was a freebie. Right. The right. first time we saw Coleman play, he was jamming uh, ukulele and rocking out and singing. Right. I was like, he can sing. I bet he can sing some good harmonies. Yeah. I was like, I bet he can play bass, too. <laughs> we'll, we'll make him play bass. Yeah. Yeah. I hope yeah. I prove you right one day. <laughs> <laughs> Well, cool. Um, and so what's coming up? Yeah, you guys are going to record again soon. What else yeah. is coming up this summer? A um, bunch of shows. Uh-huh. Uh, we're playing We're playing this weekend in Eugene for uh-huh. the Wildflower and Music Festival at the Pisca Arboretum. We'll be playing there later in the fall for mm-hmm. their Mushroom Festival. Mm-hmm. We're also playing the Mushroom Festival, pretty big Mushroom Festival, down in McLeod mm-hmm. in a couple of weeks. I think next, mm-hmm. next the week after this weekend. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, um, and we're doing uh, a, a big local gig, Medford wise. We're going to be playing the um, Bluegrass Blues and Barbecue mm-hmm. at Roxy Ann. Uh-huh. Uh, we're going to be the first band in that, which is awesome because my I've got family flying in just for that show. Mm-hmm. So it's just I'm glad we're the first band actually because then we get to play and then and party, then, <laughs> right? And <laughs> enjoy the rest of the night. Mm-hmm. Cool. Well, thanks so much for playing and uh, and uh, doing this for, for JPR. We really appreciate it. Hey, so. thanks for having Thank us. You. We yeah. love your station. Thanks for listening to our special open mic edition of Open Air Amplified from the Rhythm and News Service of JPR. I'm Dave Jackson. Thanks to John Griffin and Dave Young for engineering, Daniel Kelly for hosting, and all the bands that joined us. You heard The Balladeer, Sophia Phoenix, Miller Twins, Charlie Prayers, and that was Mountaintop Sound. Thanks for listening to the Rhythm and News Service of JPR.
Thank you.